What in the heck are them things right there? They're running. They're not used to us yet, are they? Do you have... Are, are you feeling ill? You all right? <laughs> I have a plan. Okay, what are these things? Those are Hereford heifers. Bangs vaccinated. In last video, we were just selling our purebred Black Angus you, bulls. Yeah, but I think your video, last video said we're cleaning out the pens. Oh, that was the other day I watched it. Like we're emptying our pens so then we can go to the field. Uh-huh. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Dad bought himself 40 open replacement heifers. Yep. And what are, are we gonna, are we calving these two or what's the deal? Well, maybe if you want to. Nah, I'm good. We're gonna breed them to black Angus bulls. They're gonna have black baldy calves, which is a black calf with a white face. It's called an F1. It's a first cross. They're gonna have some beautiful babies, and I plan on. So there'd be a pot load this fall of red heifers, and I plan on selling them. So if anybody's interested. We're gonna start giving them pellets and calming them down and getting them used to us and shouldn't take too much. And uh, they're, you know, they're some nice Herefords. They're up off the ground. They're not those really short ones. We got some nice framed heifers. We're gonna breed them and it's gonna be some exciting new content to talk about the summer, right? Uh huh. And so this is what I'm calling dad's midlife crisis. Yeah. It's another check off the bucket list type of thing, yeah. Are you a Hereford too? <laughs> At the end of the day, it's just a different breed of cattle. To us, you know, we raise Black Angus. They look kind of out of place in a little. They catch your eye around here. So we're going to start the day. We obviously got done feeding at home. Now we're going to feed just two bales over here. And then we're going to start pulling out some corn with the grain bag. Also getting low on corn in the pit again. Got a decent amount on there, we'll drop that off. Hook up the grain back with the loader tractor and head over to Jeff's place. We didn't quite make it and then we got stuck. Eight dollars a bushel for corn and Brian wants to feed cattle. That's how smart I am. see dad's reaction when he walks in that thing looks sweet any minute now maybe stop to take a leak or something Gee. what do we have here <laughs> that's what our fuel guy did oh. Aaron from Brooks Oil he walked in there he said holy crap that thing's awesome yeah. you know what it, what it, what's the story, Cool. So, I've always wanted one of these. You know, you walk into somebody's fancy house, they got a bear on the floor, they got a nice skull on the wall, and it's like, where do these people find something like that? And so I finally found one at Skull Bliss online. 
I knew it hadn't rained for a while, but that thing's dehydrated. <laughs> yeah, it's an authentic skull, and they do all this craftsmanship right here. Oh, that's not, it's not natural for them to have a heart on their forehead? No, I don't think so. I see. Mm, right. You're a businessman. And they're obviously ethically sourced, you know, they don't just take an animal and kill it just for the skull. It's, uh, it's an animal byproduct that they're using. We're going to hang it on the wall somewhere, maybe even right there. Get the whole trifecta with the deer and the and the horns. I was hoping it'd be here for bull day, which was last video, but we just missed out. This thing, this thing came in the mail yesterday. And if you're wanting one of these, I'll put a link below. And actually, if you use code Sunny Farms, you can get fifty dollars off your order. You'll get people stopping and saying, "Holy crap!" Just like our propane guy when he walked in, he had to he had to do a double take. So check out the link below. Skullbliss.com if you're interested in some skulls like this. They got goat. This is obviously a longhorn. All kinds of different stuff you can find on there. Take off here just like a few weeks ago. We're going to do three loads of corn. Taking it just right down the road to our neighbor's feedlot. I want to make sure the radiator's clear. Slingshot engage. Wonder if Dad brought some Herefords over to Jeff's place too. Or next time it might be sheep. This guy. You never know what Brian's gonna do. So Brian's hauling that load quick, and Jeff's got a little project going on. His, were you driving and it just fell out, or what was I the know. deal? It, uh, I, the last time I put it on, the pin on the bottom side broke, so all it was doing was falling to the ground. Hmm. So I got it fixed, and uh, now I'm just putting it back on. <clears throat> you want me in here? It don't matter. It's dark and scary and smells like poop. I can go in there. <laughs> no, that's fine. Okay. Let's do your, your right one. Okay. So put that in. Okay. Oh. Fall off? No, my phone just fell in the poop. It's alright. Tractor was really hot at the end of that load. Let's see if we can clean a little bit more out. Really not much dust in there, plugging it. Might be low on coolant. Want me to help you out? Oh, okay. And yeah, we're starting to warm back up. A 
Hope we didn't burn up a tractor. This needs to cool off. Low on corn, I've been taking these bolts out. Every once in a while, the corn would avalanche down and keep going, but we gotta get an extension in there. Not only that, we got an air leak in this back bag, I think. I can feel it right here. I've been hearing it. I think we got an air leak in this airbag. How much more car do we need? A little after 12, Ellie says it's lunchtime. That fertilizer should be coming between 3.30 and 4. But in between that, we're gonna try to do a welding project, just a small little thing over at the South Farm. While we were gone, there was a delivery in here. These two bowls. Obviously not the cow. These two bowls are brothers. And they're the lucky folks that are gonna be put in with those herfers that dad bought a couple days ago. So this gate, you can see it's all the way to the bottom. And so we, we worry quite a bit, especially when we have a high-headed cow when we're working cattle in here, that it's gonna, that's gonna hop over the moon, you know? Not only that, they got some concrete here, so they get some good footing. You get a wild sucker. They come in this corner, they're sniffing, they got their head over it, and then they back up so they can get some momentum to jump over this thing. I mean, it's under my boob over here, you know? It's pretty low, so I'm just gonna get a piece of metal Weld about a foot high, go across. There we go, got a nice piece. Winch down, some water in case we start a fire. A fire extinguisher in case we start a fire. Little dry and windy to be doing this. That's my bad, but I did come prepared with water and a fire extinguisher. And now, now we're done. I'm gonna sit here for about 20 minutes and make sure nothing sparks up because I don't wanna be the guy that burns this whole county down and have it on video that yeah, look like an idiot. So that should be a pretty nice deterrent it's kind of a paper tiger. They try jumping on it. It's probably going to snap right off, but I don't want them to try it. And that's the whole point of this thing. Shout out to the world's best fire extinguisher. That's pretty sweet. Ha, ha. Got some range on it. I wetted the whole area down. Nothing feels hot. Nothing's smoking. I even used some of the yellow water and I really soaked it down, I think. We're gonna be running cattle through that thing in the next couple weeks or next month at least. And I take pride in how calm most of our cattle are. I spend a lot of time with them, but there's always that one high-headed girl. And you know, once they once they jump that first gate, they don't usually calm down. So if you can just get them the first time and then be done with them and not have to chase them after they get out, and rile them up, and rile them up even more. Oh, that might be a fertilizer. Good timing, there's our, that's our fertilizer right there coming down the road. Back to field work, later this week, I gotta go to my buddy Kyle's bachelor party, and you know, it, it could be raining, so in that case, it'd be perfect timing. Otherwise, if it's not raining, it'd be decent dry weather for 
getting some field work done. I can tell you, in this part of the world right now, people aren't really rushing to get in the field. It's just dry, it's windy. Who wants to put expensive fertilizer and seed on some dry soil? Not many people. Spinners won't spin. I guess you gotta have it plugged in for it to do that, I guess. Uh... Oh, I've been looking for these gloves. <laughs> I can't believe they made it all that way, just like that. <laughs> what? I've been looking for them for a week. I tell you what, this day couldn't get any better. I like this number right here. That's how many acres an hour we're doing. Dang near 70. And this field is about 70 acres, so we'll get pump it out real quick. You know, it's a good thing that one hydraulic hose wasn't shoved in there, right? Because that's what got me to find my gloves sitting on the back of that hydraulic port right there. Over there about a mile is where I was doing that welding, that little bit of welding. And I'm not seeing a big, I'm not seeing a bunch of flames or anything. So it looks like between the water, the fire extinguisher, and the yellow water, we were able to put that fire out and keep it out. So we got a little fertilizer left in here. We're going to run it off on this field. Won't even get a third of it done, I don't think, and then we'll call it a day. Our spreader is getting pretty dang empty. Probably can't see much there. But we got these ditches coming up and so while we got a small amount of weight in the back, I want to hit these ditches. It'll be easier on the machine as compared to hitting them while we're full. And it won't be as top heavy either. Thanks for watching today we did a little bit of everything and tomorrow we're gonna try to get more fertilizing done do a few hundred acres and just pray that it rains we we just need it desperately I don't know if we can plant and get into moisture and that's that's pretty scary not only that if you can't raise cattle feed if you got I mean you worst case scenario it doesn't rain for 500 years and you know we'll just all be dead so we could use the rain. But we'd love to see you next time. Hit the subscribe button. Also, if you hit the bell right next to that subscribe button, turn all the no turn all the no, no Man, I can't talk. Turn all the notifications on. You'll get notified through YouTube when we post Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays. Thank you very much. Have a good one. You kids want some candy? I mean, pellets. I got pellets in my van, my gator over here. You just gotta get on in there. Hmm, yes it